All right guys, I've been trying to figure out what to do in this video and I don't have a choice but to do fuel lines, unfortunately. So I need to figure these fuel lines out. So I'm going to take off all the stuff I did previously in the last mittens video. Just do it! And start trying to figure out how to route these fuel lines. I have a bunch of different lines. I think I have like three different people's kits, but they don't work well around the TGVs. So the good news to get around that and kind of brainstorm this, I cut the TGV connector off of the old harness. That way I can plug in the TGV and see where the fuel line's going to hit. So it's always good to have little things like this for reference, not to mention uh, there's no way I was using that to begin with because it's all cracked and stupid. And aside from doing that, in this video, I have the iWire grounding kit. I have my new battery cable assembly and the little plugs. These are just to be able to put the ID injectors on the stock harness without cutting up that beautiful new harness I just bought. I also have the map adapter. So this will go from my AEM four bar map sensor back to the stock harness. Cool. Tanner's birthday is coming up. It's only like nine months away. So if you guys uh, want to get him a lovely birthday present, he uses Saran Wrap more than anyone I've ever seen in my entire What's life. Wrong? Tell me Saran Wrap's not great for packing. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying you use a liberal amount of it. Like wow. that is your favorite go-to for everything. It's cheaper than so if you guys want to make this man happy right here, buy him a Bro. lifelong supply of Saran Wrap. It's cheaper than tape, okay? Anyways, let's get this manifold off, undo half the stuff I did for fun in the last video, and start brainstorming where to put these fuel lines. I'm gonna admit it, I'm feeling a little bit defeated right now uh, by these fuel lines. These PTFE fuel lines do not like to bend, so I already broke one by bending it way too much and trying to fit it through some stuff it didn't want to fit through. With these old style TGVs, they have the sensor on one side and the actual motor on the other. This guy is huge and gets in the way of everything. So as I'm trying to put this in here and finagle it and figure out where this is going to go around this, this one's not too bad, surprisingly, even though it's huge because it doesn't make contact with the connector. But on this side, it's right next to that connector, like in the exact same path. So I test fit and put the connector on there and I have enough room to get a 180 off that. But the issue is on this side where I've kind of got everything connected, this one here that runs into this I need to go under it or over it or 90 it or something. And if I put a 90 off that, the fitting is directly in the way. And this one is actually closer on this side to that fitting. So rather than having the little additional bit of space that seems like it wouldn't really do much, like on this side, having it that much closer, I actually have the fitting itself right in the way of that instead of the like metal part of the hose that 180s. So that is making, if I try and plug this in, it not fit. And like I said, I already messed up one of the PTFE hoses. So I am going to get on Vibrant and order a set of their braided lines. And we're just gonna make our own hoses for this. That's our best route. I'm gonna give up on this for now, as much as I wanted this to work today. And I'm going to put the new battery cable in, see if I can't figure out where to run all of the other stuff and hopefully make something positive out of today. Friends, the world is on fire currently, and Tanner's still playing with his cock. <laughs> Clash of Clans, okay? So I went about uh, throwing this 
grounding kit in here. So we have that all wired up. I didn't put it in the same spot as Brian kind of used for his demonstration, but I made sure to hit all the right spots. Uh, that way I could just tuck it down in here nicely, route it under here. That was kind of a pain to get it down on this head, uh, but I didn't want wires going over on top and all around places. Aside from that, we also have a oil feed on our turbo again. So we we're able to find an oil feed in Tanner's secret random box of random stuff. And we got that on there. I was going about routing lines and trying to figure other things out. So just going over what I'm doing with the manifold to try and make everything work and be all friendly and EPA cool. I teed this off. So this would normally on a factory setup run straight from this to this lower piece on the purge solenoid. Um, and then you have your purge valve and your purge valve, this piece here would normally run to the T on the back to get vacuum off that. And then while it's doing that, uh, this line here would normally tee off on the EVAP line that goes up to this top one. And this side here would normally go to the manifold. So I'm trying to keep all of that, but I'm going to try and find a way to tee this into my pull stampers. And then I think everything else should work pretty normal. I should be able to run a line from the EVAP up to this, tee off it to this guy, run this back. Uh, if I don't want to run this back, I could possibly make another T and just tee the hell out of this to where I have a T coming off this as well. So that would see vacuum, but that might look kind of crazy from that. And I'm trying to keep this somewhat clean. So right now I like how it looks. I don't think I'll have any problems with that. So now I can move on to the fun part since I'm not making fuel lines currently because I'm gonna run the fuel lines both 180 and feed them through here and through there and run them back. What I can do now is try and figure out the engine harness which will probably bolt on this. So let's figure that out and hopefully oh, I'll yeah, have yeah. this all routed properly. Day for you guys. I did a lot of stuff off camera. It's actually the next day because it got pretty dark, but just kind of going over everything. I have this passenger side essentially done at this point. I've got all the different wiring and everything ran down here. They're all going where they need to. I was able to, after taking this off, that's probably where the last kind of little montage ended. I took this off to be able to snake these iWire connectors in there behind them. I still have enough room to be able to design lines around this. I'll just take this off, pull it up, and I should be able to do two 180s that'll feed through here. I already tested running some lines under there. I am still able to fish them out the other side, so that should work perfect. I also spent a lot of time off camera trying to get these hoses as clean looking as I possibly could. So I'm happy with how they look now. So yeah, this whole side is done. My little idea that I had for making this all work is actually going to work out great. So I'll run a line, do a tee off here that'll run over this way to this side. And then I just have to feed this in, get a reducer to have it go back into the turbo inlet. Everything else as far as the kit is all running up good as well. So I am happy with it. I do have to still finagle with this side to be able to get all these in, and I'm probably going to have to take off the fuel rail and mess with that like I did on the other side. But this is coming along nicely. I do have a few things I have to order. From that point, we should be able to have this thing essentially ready to go. And once I get fuel lines and get the other kits and everything that are coming in the next couple of days, we should be able to fire this thing up. So I got this side wired in as well. It's all routed correctly. The only things I left off were the ground straps because if I hook up the ground straps at this point, it's gonna pull all this tight and it's gonna get in the way of trying to make these fuel lines work in hopefully the next or thereafter video that comes out after this one. But now the entire wiring harness is hooked up. We are all good to go. Once we get our intercooler and everything else, all the little doodads on there, we should be good to fire this thing up.
So with that being said, that's all I've got for you in this video. If you like the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. If you feel like subscribing, that would be dope. And hopefully we'll get this car up and running soon. So word of the day today is derper. Form a little derps here. Are you sleeping on a rock, bro? Doesn't look very comfortable. Bye.